Love you, Carol. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're only two minutes late. That is not that bad, I guess. No, no. Um, no, not that bad. All right, so here we are with Shad Nowicki. And um, thank you, by the way, for, for doing this. And uh, all, well, which, we're, all stuck, we're all stuck at home, right? We, what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all Make stuck at home. We have plenty of time, right? Sure, sure. Making Hopefully. the best of it, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. That was my place um, to be but, here, though, really. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you could. Uh, I, you're one of my favorite painters and artists, so I'm really glad we got a chance to uh, get you on here so we can watch. It's true, and I mean, I it, I have to give props to Nickel City because I never would have got a chance to to see your yeah, stuff that's... without going there. Um, and you have, I think, the coolest booth at Nickel City. So hopefully they get that rescheduled because it's the largest and it has the coolest stuff in it. So um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But speaking of that, I'm glad you got to get on here because we really wanted to uh, highlight you, highlight your art. But uh, you do a lot of live streaming on your Facebook page where people can actually watch yeah. you uh, paint, which is cool. And we we get to see like your your painting, what you're working on, and we get to see like a little bit of where you're working. But I thought it'd be awesome if you could actually give us a quick little walk around of where you make the magic happen. I really love That's Shed's live streams because yeah. it because it takes away from my work when I'm at work during the day. It's nice little yes, break. I run them on my second yeah. monitor while I'm working. Well, you know, and and no, you know, no offense to muffler guys and proctologists, but if they were doing live streams, it's really not that fun. What I do just happens to be fun, and I try to make it a little bit fun. But yes, we're here tonight. I'm going to give you guys the only <laughs> tour I've ever done live of. Ooh, my house my the only and tour. And give you guys uh, uh, a little shot of uh, how I live in the 80s, pretty much surrounded by it. Yeah. I love it. So that's what we're doing tonight. We got some questions and stuff. So so you guys get ready because I got questions for you. Yeah. All right. All right. I like questions. <laughs> cool. But um, yeah, you want to you wanna give us a little uh, look around now or you want to go through some. Uh, well, yeah, let's what, uh, let's you, do a couple questions do? and then uh, then I'll uh, I'll walk around. Definitely, definitely. So All right, we should cool. probably talk about uh, yeah some some fun stuff first, or not? Yeah, fun stuff. Well, no, no, I I, uh, I want to know what which what's some um, well, there's so many questions, but how, how about this? Let how did you get into this? I'm sure that that's a question you probably get anytime you're interviewed a lot. But uh, what is your uh, you know what's your inspiration? What even got you started painting? When did you start painting? Things like that. Oh, um, well, I've always been drawing. I've been drawing since I was a little kid, right? And uh, the first thing that got me into art ever, and I'll show you later, first first memory of me getting into art was I had an old uh, power record, uh, book and record uh, comic book, an old 33, and I was, uh, it was uh, Batman. And it was Batman and Joker oh, yeah. and all this other stuff. And uh, I read it and I was listening to it and I was turning the pages and I saw these like three panels and um, those, I don't, I didn't know an artist or a comic book artist or Marvel from DC at that point, but I liked these three panels that were in this, this comic, just the artwork of it. And I thought it was, I thought it was really, really sweet. So um, ended up being Neil Adams artwork uh, who ended up oh, being yeah. later and, and a great guy. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's how it all kind of started. And I saw these, these cool images with these colors and stuff. And I started drawing and then uh, much, much later on, uh, not until maybe uh, middle school, I started painting um, and then really didn't focus on uh, painting till high school. And then just, psh, that's all I've pretty much done since, you know, my, with my life, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I've, I've changed life. style and I've changed, you know, genres and I did the gallery thing and then I've done all the other stuff and, um, now I'm I'm much happier now, and kind of you can even see in the last couple of years I'm kind of out of the comics and and uh, cartoony stuff, and now really focusing more on uh, movies and entertainment, fine art. You know, that's what I love. That's my passion. It's the movies. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. So, now. so sub question: Why painting, vice drawing, or you know, computer? Uh, oh well, computers. Hell, man, I. I'm the worst, you know, I, I did my website, but I, 
if you gave me like a you know electronic pen or something, I have no clue what I've never done. It. It's not my thing. I've always had a paintbrush in my hand uh, and a pencil, you know, uh, painting to me is just, uh, you know, drawing's great. Everyone draws. I mean, you have to be, you have to have all your fundamentals and figure it all out uh, before you can, you know, get into painting. But uh, painting to me just was fun and it was a challenge and it was something different to take this stuff and blend it and move it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a whole different outlook to art because up to that point, yeah, I was doing pretty much drawing and doing small stuff, you know, um, but yeah, painting is just, that's my monkey on my back right now, you know, so I love it. I love it. Whatever so here's a question, Chad, what, uh, what drives you to pick your next subject other than the ones that are, uh, commissions, of course. Okay. You guys want, all right. We're here for secrets, right? All right. Secrets. That's yeah. right. For tonight. All right. I'm going to let you guys in on a secret that only a couple of people know. Okay. So sometimes when I get bored. And I don't know what to paint, right? I'm going to flip this around. This is what I do. Nope, I'm not even kidding. All right. Can you yeah. see this? All right. So this is, this is a CD every year on it from 1977 to 1991. And when I'm bored and I don't know what to paint, I spin it. Boom. Lands on 1980. So we can do all the movies from 1980 TV shows. So I start looking up stuff. And that's uh, that's kind of how I do it. But yeah, that's that's really that okay. That is that. So, so much better of an answer than I was hoping for. Yeah. yeah. So like today, I'm working on a. This is a new uh, new commission piece I'm working on here for a guy in Adam, Adam West. West. Yes, nice. but I always have a. Uh, I always have these cool collages that I start doing with all this old vintage stuff, and I put them up, and you know, work on kind of stuff like that. I got a bunch of them here, and then when it hits me. You know what I want to put on them, I'll put on them. But yeah, there's a ton of old school '70s stuff and '80s stuff on there. And, uh, so I know that in a lot of your paintings, you have like um, your, the what the, the materials you're using to paint on, like comic book pages, yeah. newspaper clippings, things like that. Do you do that uh, on every single painting, and no, do you have certain uh, stuff that you look for for the painting? Yeah, it really, it really does, depends on on the painting um, with. Especially with, uh, you know, when I'm doing a portrait for somebody or something like that, it depends. You know, uh, if I'm doing like a celebrity portrait and I put, I do these career ones where I put every movie and TV show, whatever they had uh, in their career, in the back of the painting. That's that's part of the painting, uh, but it really depends on kind of the mood and what strikes and what I want to do and how how serious I want to get with with each one. You know. Nice. So, besides from Nickel City Con, uh, what other cons do you do, do you do you frequent? Well, I've done a bunch of stuff in the past, everything from Niagara Falls to Jersey and and all over the place. Uh, this summer, Nickel City was definitely on my list. Um, I'm looking at doing another one in Jersey. There was one in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I got a few few lined up. Unfortunately, as it is right now, we're all uh, living off the internet, you know, uh, trying to make ourselves that way, you know. You and Jack uh, were going to go down and visit Steel City, weren't you? Yeah, we were going to check that out first, and then I'm, you know, I'm still looking forward to maybe doing that one in the in the fall. But uh, you know, as it is right now, I got you know five six months of me sitting here painting of uh, artwork that I've produced, and I have nowhere to show it except for the internet, you know. So that's uh, well, you know, now is the perfect time to do that. Yeah, show it on the internet. Seating, but uh, you know, I, I got a lot of friends in the art community. They all kind of doing their thing, try to try to get the word out. Because um, really, I mean, just like me, we I I have a job, and if there's no income coming in for people. I I lose my job first. You know, I'm residual income. So, uh, but right. you know, that's why the live the live sales, the uh, you know the online stuff is is fun. So every Sunday night now, I'm gonna be doing a live live sale at seven o'clock on my Facebook page. So, yeah, it's been good. It's been fun. Great. Very show. cool. Good to hear. So in that vein, uh, I was going to go around and ask everybody uh, to describe to them what the whole COVID-19 thing means to them right now in three words, if possible. I'm going to end I'm going to end with Shad. So let's start with, with Lyle. If you had to sum it up uh, three words, what would it be? Three words of what described in COVID to me. Yeah, for like right now, if you had to describe it, just three words. Natural world reset. 
Natural build reset. Huh. Nice. Fine. Get all deep, Lyle. Jeez. Uh, okay, Adam. Three words. Yeah. F keep it my clean. life. <laughs> yeah, he kept it clean. All right. <laughs> it's just uh, a lot of people's work is slowing down. Uh, mine, not so much. So it's just a lot of reporting on my end. No. Yeah. All right, Matt. A hot dumpster fire. Mm. Hot dumpster fire. Yeah, that's, that uh, describes a lot of stuff right now. It does. Um, you know, it's uh, it's horrible. It's, it, it brings society to a halt. You know, people are scared. People are getting really sick. And uh, natural world reset, maybe, but I'll be glad when we're on the back end of this thing and we can get back to having normal lives and not being so afraid of standing too close to someone in a supermarket line. I'm I okay with count, that. But though, that was way over three copies. words. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Uh, for me, it's just, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, this could be over now. Um, that's, that works for me. Uh, what about you, Shad? Well, you know, it hits everybody differently. I would say it's overwhelming. It's scary. And for a lot of people, it's personal. You know, uh, this hits mm -hmm. their it's them where they, where they live and their families, you know, and their communities. So yeah, uh, hopefully everybody stays healthy and, uh, you know, gets through it because it's, it's scary. Yeah. It is. And hopefully, hopefully the, just with, with, with the art, with the sales you're having on Sunday night, with the stuff we're trying to do, just give some, some, uh, some entertainment options for people to enjoy themselves while they're not able to get out and yeah, do definitely. everything yeah. they're used to doing. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, if it was a comedy, if it was a comedy show, and I had three words, I'd say sales are up, right? But no. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we gotta we gotta be serious. That's funny. Um, because I think people are sitting in their house right now. I was talking to an artist buddy of mine the other night. I'm like, they're bored of shit, right? They're just sitting in there going, "Oh, it's that same thing we got at Hobby Lobby six years ago that you didn't dust, you know, Gladys." So you know, let's let's get something cool, right? Gladys. So uh, yeah, for me, it's it's cool. I can show some new stuff off, and hopefully, people grab it. You know. Okay, if I have any more kid, I want to, and it's a daughter. I want to name her Gladys. <laughs> Hey, I gotta do that now. I said it way back in the beginning of this, the there's, there's going to be either a lot of divorces or a lot of pregnancies after this is all done, or both. Yeah, probably oh, both. Yeah. Then, you have the baby. And, uh, you have the baby I, boomers. I, what are we going to call these? Uh, these are going to be uh, Corona boomers or something, you know? Corona boomers. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the babies nine months are now are going to be named Corona. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Generation I hope, COVID. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. yeah. But, oh uh, man. Too soon. <laughs> no. Yeah, we have to. We have so, to go push right. the limit. All right. Well, let's, yeah, let's so, get out of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over here for a second. So let's get out okay. of this. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's let's see let's, the. Uh, let's look at some look at some fun stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you guys ready for this tour? All right. I do. Yeah, we love I it. am. All right. Let me flip this around. There we go. So this is uh, my living room. And uh, here's some of the new it. stuff that you guys have seen. I still have to ship a few of these out. But uh, oh, that's awesome! Yeah, and then in the center <laughs> we got the big Goonies piece. Oh uh, yeah, commercials. And then we get into some of the fun <laughs> stuff, right? So um, lots of celebrity stuff in my house. All the different people I've worked with, and you know, people I've met um, through the years and stuff like that. Okay, here we go. Star Wars. Everything's pretty nice. much vintage. Is so, Lyle right now drooling? Yeah. I'm pretty sure and Lyle's one drooling. Favorite, and one of my favorite things I have in my collection is uh, my original hand-numbered original Starlog cover, uh, covers, basically. They're boxes for the old Starlog magazines from the 70s and 80s. But these oh, were... Uh, nice. You can only get these for a short time, and they came all like hand painted, uh, which is amazing, you know. So that's Star Wars, and then we get into more of the groovy stuff. We have a little Ghostbusters action. Just gotta support Buffalo Ghostbusters, right? And then here you go. Here's some good stuff. Oh yeah. You know, you know any of this stuff? 
Got some Black oh, Star nice. from Battlestar Galactica, Chuck Norris. That's right. He Man, Rambo. So that's kind of my... There's those McDonald's that's things. California raisin? No. Yeah. I got a bunch of that. A bunch of that stuff. General awesome. Lee. Oh, Flash Gordon. <laughs> and for all those wax packs nuts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. Got Those that. still have uh, the stick of bubble gum in them. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and they're all different too. So like, I got you know, there's Mork and Mindy, you know, Howard Mark, the Duck. Like Harry and the Hendersons. So they're all different ones in there. And then I got um, Batman, and I actually have stuff coming here. My buddy Brett's. I got Superman the movie, Superman three coming tomorrow. It goes in there. Uh, Batman Returns, and then Lyle, you'll like this. One of my favorite shelves. This is my A Team Night Rider shelf, and oh, I do yeah. have the board game. <laughs> this is the uh, if you guys watch Comic Book Man, that's the Aqua thing they were throwing sponges at in the parking lot. Yeah, it's like a oh, water yeah. toy. My uh, TV tray, my Mister T bank. Nice. So, night, off. Does the Night Rider oh, like have the, the thermos? Got BA Stomper van. That's awesome. Yeah, I got the Stomper van. And then a bunch more stuff that's signed. A lot of people I've worked with, people I met, some good ones. Chris McDonald, one of the paintings I did for him. Very cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, he was at the first we'll Nickel City. He was a nice yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Chris is a sweetheart. And then my little ET collection. And oh, then we can God. get into. So this is like new stuff, NECA. Mostly, yeah, these nice. are all new figures. Nike has some nice detailed figures, though. Yeah, I know they, yeah, they do. do. Like, man, they're alien stuff, and and my favorite is the Dark Crystal, and then the Planet oh, yeah. Hipsters, my old oh, Mega awesome. in the back. Naven, nice. are you awake? Well, we might as well we might as well say hi to Naven Johnson, because he's here too. Naven, say hi, brother. <laughs> nice. <laughs> shy. I love shy. turtles. Did you yeah, see? He's uh, a turtle. He too. Walmart's going to be carrying the uh, reproduction uh, original Ghostbuster figures too. Yeah, I when? saw that. And there's um, my old spin rack, all with oh yeah, uh, nice plastic man stuff. chair. There's my uh, Star Wars number one Alex Ross sign. Yeah, my plastic man chair that I painted to look like plastic. That's man. great. That's uh, awesome. That's great. <laughs> here's a cheapo. Just throw that. Oh up. yeah. No, that's yeah, did, that's you just sell that. Yeah, but that's uh, so. A couple and then bucks. we got more paintings, more paintings. Holy crap, more paintings! Uh, <laughs> stuff I did. Do you take those all know. down off your wall every time you go to a show shed? Yeah, but usually I have them down and I have other stuff up. But unfortunately, uh, I, everything's up right now. You know, here's a cool piece I got. This is a promotion from the movie The Jerk, the paddle. Oh, ball. nice! Oh, yeah. The string in the bottom. Took the string off, but That's and then you right. got way more stuff up here. This is the, my oldest and first toy I ever got right here. This is my Kmart, um, like he came with Kong. a big rubber band on. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got That's great. It's a hazard watch. My Kevin Smith uh, Funko. Yeah, that he gave me. Kevin gave me that one. Uh, some more Louis stuff. That's great. Yeah. Herman. And then I got my uh, USA Today from Back to the Future. All right. Nice. So that's the living room. Then we get into the bedroom, ladies. Ooh. Oh, I've been waiting. <laughs> All right. So here's a couple cool pieces that I like that I that I really like. So out of all the shows that I've ever done, the first person <laughs> to ever give me something was uh, Marky Ramon. And he came up with this little cool uh, canvas that he drew out for me up at the, at the city <laughs> almost here. So I had to frame that up, man, because that's that's pretty sweet. And then this is kind of my that's awesome. Station. And you got more Star Wars, lots more Star Wars, and then uh, pretty much this is Comic Con right here. There's a bunch of stuff stacked up. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll see a bunch of stuff stacked up there. Um, Leon Redbone. All the concerts I saw. Nice. Um, this is all 80s television stuff, 80s TV. And then I'll show you a couple of cool pieces. I got a bunch of uh, comic art that I had drawn up for me over the years. So 
This Classic is all Leonard man. Kirk stuff. Leonard Kirk, Leonard Kirk. Here's a great piece. George Perez, Superman. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Jeff oh, Jace is drooling for that. Girl. I am. And then the piece that started it all right there. My Batman, Neil Adams, Power Records, signed. Me and Neil. Yeah. And then uh, the Batman that he did for me. Oh, convention. very cool. So that was a nice. great gift. Yeah. You don't have to see the bathroom. It's just more Hollywood stuff. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So here's the, this is kind of what we got. If you guys haven't seen any of the new uh, new paintings. Oh, I love the Ferris Bueller's Day Off there. Yeah. So what's the inspiration they, behind they, the, uh, the new painting style with all the people facing away from the, the field um, of view? Well, you know. It's just an idea I had, you know, it's like looking back at the at the 80s, right? Like stories without faces. So there's no faces in any of these, but it tells the whole story, you know? Yeah. You, you know what's going on. You know, you know everything that's happening. So it's just something I came up with, you know, or else you can get bold with it. You know, you can go right at them. But sometimes, <laughs> uh, you know, you can get away with a little less. There's my original Steve Caballero Powell deck, never ridden. I think so. Nice. And then uh, over here we got some fun stuff. Love the Doc Holiday, Johnny There's Ringo. A great lamp. There's my old uh, 1960 Star Kiss oh, yeah. salesman of the year. Uh, Brave Star, Star animation Kiss. cells. Here's my old. Oh, I love piece. Brave Star. I got this. I was five I totally when I did that. Forgot about Brave Star until now. And then, uh, oh, oh. Oh, I can't show you that one. That's a, that's a, a that was a commission I had, but it's on there now. So yeah, more Star Wars stuff. So that's kind of how I live, you know. Oh, I got more. Never mind. We got this whole <laughs> side. Too. And wait, there's so more. This is one of my favorite figures, my uh, sideshow Superman, and then all my nice. Superman stuff. It's my favorite movie. I collect all the Superman stuff. And we got superpowers. Love it. And then oh Batman, yeah, Batman '89, and then uh, my wall of Louis with my uh, old Hulk bank, my first convention photo of Louis on a Polaroid. Imagine that. <laughs> and then uh, all my uh, Margot Kidder stuff. And then all the pretty much these are all the uh, people that I worked for and, uh, you know, met at the conventions. So pretty cool. That's very Steve cool. Gutenberg. Gutenberg, love Goots. He's awesome. All right, so that's the tour. Don't tell anybody. Oh, my painting setup. No, we'll keep it secret. It. It's, it's pretty simple. I have all my paint arranged. Get my Febreze out of there for my stinky ass. And everything's arranged by color. Pretty much that. And a bunch of brushes. I actually have a bunch of stuff out that I'm working on right now. And then paper plates, copier, I mean, you name it, extra canvas. That's how we do it. That's how we roll. All right, let me stick this back in here. And how do I flip that? There we go. So that's the tour. There we go. There we go. Excellent. That, was, that was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, all right, what are we talking so, about now? Um, well, since you went over your uh, collection and looking at all of the uh, figures and stuff that you have, I do have a question that relates to that, but we did just have another question come in here on one of the comments. Sure. Let me pull it up here. Favorite person you've met? Oh, man, that's, you know, I have a list of like, you st I thought we were going to do the one about the three women you wanted to make out with, but... Uh, favorite celebs. We will. I, you know, it's a real, it's a tough one because there's, there's a couple that have, that were really meant a lot to me. Um, but I would say probably my favorite meeting of a celeb was, uh, I did a private photo shoot at Niagara Falls uh, a few years ago, um, on the 30th anniversary of uh, Superman. And, uh, I did a photo shoot with Margot Kidder on uh, the same spot where they filmed the movie. And that was pretty much the, one of the coolest moments I had, you know, that everything taped off and I walked down and 
there's Lois Lane sitting there, you know, and she was a sweetheart too. I remember, I remember what she said. I leaned in and I said, you know, I've waited years to meet you and I just, I love you. And she goes, Oh shit, you smell nice. And that's how, that's, that's that was Margot Kidman, man. <laughs> so gave me a big kiss okay. and then she was off. And I ended up being friends with her for uh, pretty much right up until the time she passed. So yeah, she was, she was great. You know, there's a few that I've met that I, that I love Louis Ferrigno. Awesome guy. Love you, Louis. Um, Richard Dreyfus, the other guy that was a lot of fun to meet and a lot of fun to talk eighties stuff with and sit down. So yeah, they're all, they're all cool in their own way. You know, they're just like us. So. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good answer. So the top three women you want to make out with. Go. Yeah. <laughs> we were, we were going to ask this. Now, by the way, guys, you all have to answer that at some point, but it has to be with the caveat that you can see just one that your significant other will not get mad at you about because some of us here have them. <laughs> but, you know, go ahead, Chad. Uh, let's, let's hear it. All right. Well, you know, I would say probably my number one. Well, I met Margot, so that's off the list. And yeah, you know, so she's off the list, right? Um, but when I was a kid, like Helen Slater from Legend of Billie Jean was my shit. And then she was in like Secret of My Success and like a couple other movies. And I just thought she was the hottest chick in the world, right? So I'd say Helen Slater is pretty much my, my my number one, you know, out of all the 80s, 80s chicks. Um, nowadays, uh, January Jones from Mad Men. Like she's wicked, high, wow. you know. Um, and then probably as a girl next door option, Molly Ringwald. You know why not? So you know. <laughs> why not? <laughs> that was great. Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to venture in on that answer or no? <laughs> Let's not uh, kill them, marry them, and screw them, right? Or, all right. All right. right. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wait, are we all sharing our uh, uh, our right, right, Chad? If you want to, go ahead, Adam. You're single. Yeah, I am. Yeah, um, go for it. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson, definitely, <laughs> obviously. Christina Hendrick from mm. Mad Men. I'm going the other way on Mad Men. There. You want small? You want big? That's good. That's good. Well, I want small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, holy God. I don't know. There's too many. There's too it's, many. It's uh, it's getting at the creeper level now. Okay. <laughs> so any one of the any one of the sisters that's on your TV right now, Adam? Oh yeah, <clears throat> Kardashian, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he wouldn't <laughs> admit admit that loud, Adam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so I saw that you're uh, a big Goonies fan, and you have Chunk. You have a couple different paintings of Chunk. Yeah, why Chunk? Yeah. Um, because <laughs> why not, man? He's the underdog of that. He's the star of that movie. I'm sorry, you know. Chunk is awesome. I, yeah, and, agreed. Yeah. And it's funny because it, during my during my travels, I got to meet Sean Astin, and ended, ended up having a pretty funny relationship with him at the conventions, and. Got to meet the Fratelli brothers and and all this stuff, but I, I never got to meet Jeff Cohen. And, and and if if you watch him in videos, not in the Goonies, but when he was a child as a child actor, he was absolutely brilliant. And he stole every talk show and everything he was on. But yeah, I just like that, that character. You know, we're all chunks. You know, we're all like the kid that got picked on. And so I was. You know, I was the fat kid. So like, I loved it, man. I think Chunk's the best, strongest character on there. You know. I mean, he's the one that, you know, who went and dealt with the monster and came back and saved everybody. So, yeah, Chunk's the man, you know. Chunk Plus, is the Data's man. got a lot of stuff on him, and that's really hard to paint. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chunk's the most relatable, in my opinion. He is pretty relatable, and mostly just because uh, he yeah. loves ice cream. I mean, I'm, I'm halfway there tonight, you know. I mean, you know, we're there. Yeah. So, <laughs> Chunk's the man. But I, I love the movie. Adam. You're gonna have um, to. No, no. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I just said I love. I love that movie. It's just, um, you know, I saw it as a kid, and it just, and you could see it a hundred times, and and it just doesn't get old. It's a great message. Kids are amazing actors, and it's a Richard Donner movie, and he's a brilliant, you know, director. So, yeah, yeah. It was on last night here uh, in Guam, 
and of course, oh. you know, I had to watch it. But the last uh, the last couple of days, we we have a group uh, Watchtower Geek Chat ongoing, and uh, several of us were just dropping one liners. I don't know for the better part of what. 14 hours, 15 hours, we're oh just gosh, dropping yeah. all these just one liners from like, like, like one liners from the Goonies, you know, everything oh, yeah. from yeah. my bike, I want my bike, I want my, bike. you know, everything, you know, just <laughs> random one liners from the uh, it was pretty amusing. So what's what's your favorite? What, what is your favorite one liner quote from the movie shed? If you had um, to pick one, I, I'm sorry, man, there's a million, but probably my, my favorite <laughs> one was uh, is Chunk when he's. <laughs> He's like, you smell like fizz ed, and that just like yeah. kills me every time I hear it, man. You know, <laughs> just uh, you know, it's, it's a small line. It's like Ghostbusters. Like I like one tiny line in that movie that nobody even hears, and then like Goonies, it's like that one that kind of gets passed by, you know. So yeah, yeah that's what, pretty good. What's the, line what's the Ghostbusters line? Uh, it's the scene when they're with the uh, librarian in the beginning, and Vankman is pulling Ray back, and he's like. Come here, Francine. And I just yeah. think I've called people Francine for years because of that movie. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's just like the best. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Like, come here, Francine. Um, you know what I mean? It's like that was made. Oh, that's pretty know? good. Yeah. I, I used to use uh, I, like uh, that, uh, I used to use lighten up Francis from stripes all the time, and everybody was like, What the hell are oh, you talking absolutely. about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be I like the quote where they're like, let's cover the floor in uh, chocolate and let Chunk eat her way out. <laughs> That's a good one too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's so many of them, and it's it's you could just be quoting these movies for days, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. I like when it says, "Okay, Michael Jackson didn't come over to my house to use my bathroom, but his sister did." Sister did. <laughs> like, I mean, what do they think of these things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are great. All right. Um, so besides that, one of the questions I was going to ask earlier, after we were looking at all your your collection is superpowers. Now, though this question gets asked uh, all the time on interviews, but what is a superpower that if you could have, you would get it, but it cannot be flight and it can't be super strength? First, I know I had to put some restrictions. My first, my, my first inkling was completely going towards the uh, high school, you know, invisibility bathroom you know, invisibility. Locker, yeah, yeah, yeah. now that i thought about it i'm thinking maybe like you know regenerative health as, as i'm getting older you know maybe i can skip that's that right. i got youtube you know got the internet but you know maybe maybe Wolverine power. yeah something like that yeah i would yeah, say that yeah. but uh you know yeah, it'd be, be fun to be invisible for a couple hours you know oh it would every guy it would for many multiple reasons <laughs> yeah <laughs> For multiple reasons. Yeah, what about you, Lyle, if you had to pick a superpower? Well, I'd be like Shad. At first, I'd head right for the 10th right the grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for finishing that set, Mario, brother. Um, I can't do flight, and I can't do super strength, huh? No, no. Because those, no. those are just everyone's go-to. you got to pick something different. I mean, it, it could um, be invisibility. Nah, I would not want to be invisible for real. Maybe back when I was younger. But, uh, today, I'd probably like to have x-ray vision. Oh, that's cool. X-ray vision's cool. I I, I want to ask you why. You don't know if yeah, I should. Kind of like a... Okay, I'm... <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, what? okay, okay. Honestly, if if I had to really pick a super power and the reason why, I would choose like the uh, old Superman cartoons where he had like, you know, the laser that came out of his eyes, the x-ray vision, that whole thing that he had going on with his eyes where he could do all that stuff. Or like oh, Bravestar yeah. where you could see different things to different animals. That'd be pretty cool. I like that because that's like non-mainstream of, an idea, of, a, of a choice. That's cool. Uh, yep. All right, Matt. What would you do? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, burst into flames like Ghost Rider. Oh yeah, <laughs> ten and stairs. Oh. Ten and stairs is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. not only that, but you I know, like that. I go touch my Schwinn outside, and it turns into a sweet chopper. 
I can't complain yeah. about that. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just, I totally just totally sweet. lost you after I go touch my Schwinn. And I, <laughs> I, I should have heard what you said after, but I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Sorry. All right, uh, Adam, uh, what would you pick? Magnetism. I was thinking that too. That's I totally go choice. Magneto. Yeah. You guys are connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There it says psychokinesis Thanks. or telekinesis. Yeah, those are good choices too. Uh, I originally was thinking like not as cool as Magnetism. Yeah, I was just thinking Gambit. I was thinking Gambit, but I like Magnetism. That's a good. That's a good choice. That's cool. All right. Um, so we already went through most of the questions that I was that we were going to ask, which was cool. And thank you very much, Dad, by the way, for the uh, tour of the studio. That was cool. Um, so just to wrap wrap it up a little bit, what is uh, Shad? What is your favorite '80s movie? I know that's hard, but if you had to sit down right now, you just to watch something. Well, I yeah. So I picked th I picked my top three, but definitely probably my my favorite. I mean, my favorite movie of all time is, is probably the original Superman, Christopher Reeve. Um, just oh, you're my hero. And as a, yeah, and as a kid, I think that's just. I mean, the, they haven't been able to beat it, and it's you know, it's an old movie. Um, yeah. Then I'd probably go Star Wars, and then probably my third, uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. You know, so anything John Hughes. Yeah, good choice. Yeah. Those are good choices. And I love the original Superman. I absolutely love that movie. I, I've been able to introduce all of the original super films to uh, my kids. Um, and the original Superman the, is the bomb. I love it. And I love Christopher yeah, Reeve. I, I, I consider the uh, the first and the second like one movie. You know, I don't really see the yeah. breaks. I kind of put yeah. the first two together because it's, it's just a continuation, you know. I mean, if they could sell a, a five-hour <laughs> movie, they would do it, you know. Uh, so here's yeah, here's yeah. here's some for Shad to share if he doesn't mind. So loving uh -oh. Star Wars, every kid from the '80s, late '70s loves Star Wars. It's just you know part of our part of our DNA, basically. The original yep. Superman movies are Christopher Reeves. You can't even beat that. So planes, trains, and automobiles. We've talked about this plenty of times, you and I, because you know much I love that yeah, movie. Yeah. But why don't you share with people why that's a movie you like, if you don't mind? Oh, well, you know, I was out. All right. So there's, there's a big story that goes behind this. But basically, when they were filming the movie and they're filming a movie in a lot of locations in Western New York, they actually filmed it uh, very close to where my where my parents uh, farm was and used a lot of the property around there uh, to set up every day. And it was basically right off the Rice Road exit and, and down through Boston and around by my parents house and stuff like that. So every day you know, I would be able to get up, ride my bike up the hill and sit there and watch John Candy and Steve Martin and John Hughes and Michael McKean film planes, trains and automobiles. And I got to meet them and I got to do goofy stuff with those guys a couple times. And um, it was just a super, super awesome moment in my life um, where I just, you know, I was into movies before that. Um, but that really cemented the deal for me, you know, um, being, and, and I didn't really realize the magnitude of who I was meeting and who I was talking to, you know, uh, at the time. Uh, but they were some of the coolest guys I've ever met, you know, um, and just to be a little local kid riding up on his, you know, his Huffy, you know, this Rambo t-shirt on, you know, to hang out with those guys was, was pretty, was pretty kick-ass, you know, uh, I remember John Hughes. Um, I remember John Candy. Definitely remember Steve Martin, um, Michael McKean, who was in uh, a lot of TV shows. Laverne and Shirley, he's been in uh, What About Saul, a bunch of stuff, played the cop that pulled him over. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you went and visited that on the anniversary, right? Yeah. I, I drive by it all the time. My parents, I, they live right there. So, um, you know, it's it's funny because I, I've been to every single location in that movie aside from Chicago the train station in the house that they used in the movie. I actually worked on the train that was in that movie. I was a cook for a short time on that train um, that they used in. That's but cool. uh, yeah, I've been to every single location, the fields, the roads, the towns, 
um, pretty much New York City, every every single location from that movie. That one, the one train station in uh, Cherry uh, Cherry Creek or whatever Cherry Hill. What is that one place mm -hmm. called? The one with the gazebo. Oh, I forget. Yeah, it's Cherry yeah, something I forget rather. the name. Of it. Yeah, but, and there's uh, a bunch of scenes, and there's a lot. And what I've what I've learned because I've researched the movie a lot, and uh, there's a lot of deleted scenes that they didn't use, and uh, like even the so the whole scene where they get pulled over and the cars burned up. That's kind of that was the stuff that was filmed uh, by my parents' house, and they filmed a couple other scenes. But there's you know scenes of them peeing on the car. There were scenes of those guys doing a bunch of like a snow running through the snow, um, like all these different scenes in the movie that that never made it. And I as I was researching it, I found a scene, and the guys had their hands up through the burned out car, and they were coming up over a hill, and the house that was at the top of the hill was actually my parents' house where I grew up, and it never made it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I saw it in the deleted scene. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's pretty cool to know that, you know, all that stuff was literally filmed, you know, within distance of your house, in short distance. So, yeah, it was cool. That is cool. And, and, and that those is cool. guys, I just, think, I just think John Candy, man, he's just, he's just, it was such a talent in everything that he did and was such a heart, heartwarming guy in every movie. And, you know, those guys were just all awesome. So, you know, that's <clears> why I love that movie. You know? And yeah, they're unmatched. Yeah, they're unmatched. Um, so I got two last questions for you. One is, uh, who's your favorite hero and favorite villain? Oh, are we sticking straight comics? Or all right, doesn't so, matter. Anything, right. anything pop culture. Anything pop culture. Yeah, like uh, maybe like a two. You're talking to a guy who's got a whole room full of stuff to just throw darts exactly. at. Exactly. Uh, you know, Money Hannibal to dial. Magneto. Yeah, spin the dial. I would say, uh, villain wise, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go easy. Um, I'm gonna go Darth Vader just because you know. I mean, come on, who doesn't? I mean, iconic. Super iconic. Okay. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, hero. It you know it's kind of like it, it, they change as you as you get older and stuff you you kind of go oh I like this guy and I like this guy and I like this guy, um, you know I'm gonna say probably my favorite hero hero yeah I love Superman I love the movie but I'd say probably my favorite hero out of all of them is probably gonna be Batman you know yeah I'm a big big nice. Batman fan I told you Batman was better Batman. Jason. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, it depends whatever. on you. Yeah, it, you, know, it it, you know, Batman and Superman, it's, it really comes down to: Do you want to read something or watch something that takes place during the day or at night? Because they're pretty much, the same, you know. <laughs> and you know, in Lyle, you're it's America. You have the right to be wrong, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> Jason and I used to work um, together, and so it was a big battle between Superman and Batman every day. So. Yeah, yeah. So that actually tough one. leads into my next question for Shad, which was on the movie Superman. Um, now, I do not want to talk about Justice League or Man of Steel versus Batman because I, I just can't. But on the, the remake of just playing Man of Steel, um, what did you think of that movie? And have you, have you seen it? I've seen them all. I watched them all. Um, I lived with this stuff on all the time. I liked Man of Steel. I thought there's a couple parts they could have cut it, scrapped it. It's ridiculous, you know, tornado scene with Kevin Costner, Field of Dream Ship flying away. They, they could have got rid of that, you know. Um, other than that, I thought it was it was well done. You know, I liked Zod. I liked, uh, you know, the Lois Lane. I liked everything about it as a new take. You know, yeah, it's not going to be – they weren't trying to do what Singer did with, with Superman Returns, you know, and try to make right, this right. kid into Christopher Reeve. It was a different take on it. So you got to, you know, you got to allow some of your memories to just shut up and sit back and enjoy the movie, you know, so you don't get too butthurt watching it. But I thought it was, I thought it was well done. I thought he was a great Superman, you know? So just like I thought Affleck yeah. was a good, good Batman. I thought he looked like him. He acted well. Just thought the parts they put him in weren't the greatest, you know? So Agreed. here's a question for you going, same thing. Yep. Big Star Wars fans, your opinion on the prequels and then the uh, sequels. <laughs> the what? The, no, your opinion bad. on the prequels the and prequels? then the sequels. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know what a prequel is. I, I, me so don't know what a prequel is. Sorry. Um, 
Yeah. No, the new ones, though, I do like. Um, I like everything about Star Wars, those prequel movies. You know, <laughs> it's it's kind of like, you know, it could be like sex or a desert. You know, right. if you go so long without something, you're going to bite or you're going to do something with someone. Right. And so that's all yep. we had, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it's desperate. Right. Wow. Well, so right. we're like, hey, it's not too bad. You know, all right. But yeah, but and then the new stuff now it just makes you realize how how crappy those movies really right. really were to the Star Wars legacy, you know. But hey, George got paid and he made some new stuff, so we're right. all good, you know. It's all good. The new movies I think <laughs> he, are amazing. He borrowed yeah. the script for the Star Wars Christmas special. That's what the prequels are based off of. <laughs> And, and and if you guys know and you watch my live feed, I do watch that Christmas special a lot of times during the year. I do. Yes, put it on. yes, yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you, know, yeah. you got to I mean, two of the strongest Jedi's in that whole galaxy are B. Arthur and you know Art Carney. I mean, right. that's who you want? You know, Star Wars. So. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Shad, thank you very much, and we've kept you on for a good forty-five minutes. Um, so I appreciate it. It was fine. very cool. Yeah, it was. It, give us uh, some info on your sales that you have coming up. You mentioned them in the beginning about Sunday evening. Sure. So let's uh, let's so, get the details on that. Yeah. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna uh, still be doing uh, painting live and stuff as I as I'm uh, working through commissions and other work. But every Sunday I'm gonna do a sale at seven o'clock. Um, I have that, uh, my older stuff, the comic book stuff, the cartoon animated series uh, paintings. We're going to start getting rid of those. Um, there's a few left in that category, so that's what I'm going to dump off first. But then I got some of the newer stuff I'm going to start putting out. Um, and then people are going to have to kind of get a hold of me for pricing on some of the newer pieces. But yeah, we're just going to run sure. through it. And uh, it's kind of nice because, um, you know, if there's a certain piece or something you want to see, you just hit me on Messenger and I can pull it off the wall and uh give you a little close-up of it but the sales have been really really good and i wanted to just uh thank you well, that's good for being completely supportive uh adam your piece is on the way you know lyle's got some stuff you know you guys i'm really looking good forward good. to uh displaying that uh i'm what sailing you know? what about bob painting yeah. with them on the sailboat I'm debating, kind of? yeah i'm debating i don't know where i want to put it do i want to put it you know kind of in the front part of my house or do I want to put it above my bed? <laughs> it needs to go above your bed. Well, the, the thing is, if you put artwork above your bed, you never see it, right? So, you know, that's the thing. Because you're usually sleeping or laying down, you know. So put it somewhere you can see it. I always tell I always tell guys if you know at, at Comic Cons now, you know, you know, guys like, ah, I'd buy this painting with my my wife, you know, or my girlfriend. I'm like, Hang it over the toilet, man. She'll never see it. You, know? yeah. <laughs> like, you get to enjoy it. <laughs> You're good, man. So. That like that. But um, yeah. oh, right, uh, we got another comment come in here. Let's see. At least the Mandalorian is making up for this new trilogy of Star Wars films. Ah. Yes, yes, I love everything. I do like about Mandalorian. favreau has got it going on with that show. Oh yeah. They did yeah, just announce yeah, that Disney Plus is doing the Obi Wan story too. Which really? is, which I'm curious to see how they do that. You know, I'm, yep. uh, that looked pretty cool. You know, so um, they yeah, just I gave like everything about today. Star Wars, like the stuff that I like. Though, what's that? I said they just gave that Obi Wan the green light today. Did they? Yeah, yeah. I I think I, I like it, man. I think it's great, I, and it's funny because it's it's something for me who's a vintage guy who everything paints is pretty much 89 and down it's a new outlook at star wars that i can paint you know and i've done some pieces from I've done, man a bunch of stuff from that new mandalorian already yeah um man it's cool it's cool you know what i mean it's it's basically a sergio yeah. leone spaghetti western oh yeah it's space life. western totally oh yeah totally yeah, all it is. it's like they brought and they uh what... and people love baby yeah Yoda. they do <laughs> everyone loves baby Yoda. Yeah. Yeah, that that it's child. Like they brought, I, what's, I love what's that show back? Firefly. It's like they turned Firefly into Star Wars. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, awesome. I, I could see that. You know, I mean, there's new stuff that's coming out. I don't know if you guys watched the new Dark Crystal. I thought that was absolutely the prettiest television show I've ever seen. Oh yeah, I think it's absolutely that was good. beautiful. That new Dark Crystal. Um, so the fact yeah, they the did Muppets is awesome. Up. 
what I haven't seen that. No, no, I haven't seen no, that. No, the Muppets. they kept the Muppets for the Dark Crystal. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, animated, right, so. the yeah, yeah, the CGI just, I mean, you can't, I mean, CGI, the good news is in the industry, if you watch, it's slowing down or it's finding its niche, you know. Um, yeah, cheap productions are going to use CGI more, but it, it the practical stuff, the, the, the effects guys and the mold makers and the Muppets guys are you know they're coming back and they're coming back strong and you can see it in the movies you know and it looks good I yeah mean, they're finding a good blend yeah and, and it works and yeah. it works well and that's what i like to see you know so yeah i, I hope they yeah, just keep rolling the stuff out you know put more action jackson in that mandalorian i love seeing him carl weathers man that's awesome <laughs> so yeah, i'm all for it yeah what'd you think it's about the biker cool. scouts in the one episode where they were sitting on the bike talking and they were shooting at the can and they kept missing it you remember that you part you know what that could have been that, yeah that's funny because that could have been like any like law enforcement in california like biker like cops you know like <laughs> yeah. chips that's any, all i could think of is like, chips oh, you know just sitting there and like you know it could have been any of them and, and, it, yeah. and it shows the nice thing about that 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 series is it shows a very human side to the characters which you didn't see in the movies you're seeing right. yeah. like Kevin Smith, you know, you're seeing the garbage man and you're seeing the engineer and you're seeing the guy that makes the food instead of just the heroes flying by, you know? So it's putting a way more yeah. human spin on it, I think. You know? Yeah. It was a lot like, that's kind of like what rogue one did. It gave that mm -hmm. like zoomed in on the, on the human aspect of it. And I think that they're doing a really good yeah. mix of bringing that in this too. Rogue one had such an amazing, nostalgic look to it with the filtering and the cameras and i mean it made you feel like you it blended seamlessly to 77 you know what i mean it, just, yeah. it was just really well done. yeah you know using using no name british not no name but you know lesser known british actors like they did you yeah. know um on the original and stuff so i i really applaud them for that that was an awesome awesome choice yeah they did good yeah. All right. Well, anybody else have any other questions they want to shoot at Shad before we let him get back to being awesome? What's next? What's next? What uh, next? For me? Besides your Sunday night I have, sale. Uh, son, well, I have to finish up this one here. Um, this uh, Adam West piece. Hopefully I get that done. What's today? Friday, I get that done tomorrow. And then I have a new commission Sunday to do during the day um, that I'll flip over and hopefully get done by Monday night. Uh, but Sunday night, I do have the sale at seven o'clock and then I have some other commission stuff to do. And um, I'm always looking for ideas. So there's a, I have a whole list of stuff uh, that I work through. Uh, so I don't know what's, what's next. I might have to spin that, spin that CD and <laughs> pick something. <laughs> you know? you know, it's funny. Cause I, it, that's it's, great. It's embarrassing almost, right? Because people ask you as an artist, they're like, you know, how much serious deep thought you put into this? And, you know, yeah. And most artists say, I don't know, it's all, yeah, they talk about their emotions and all this other crap, right? So I'm like, nah, man, it's just like, that's cool. Spin the wheel. What it lands on, I mean, you know, it's going to come out good if I put my, you know, put my soul into it. So, yeah. So it's not like I'm running out of stuff, you know? I mean, there's so much stuff I want to paint, you know? And there's, and then I, and then I, I do sometimes think to myself, though, like, is somebody going to buy it? Like, you know, so if I weigh out two different like things, you know, am I going to go this way or this way with it? You know, I just did the judge dread. The other, it, the other one I was going to do was uh, Ned Beatty from, uh, from uh, Superman. <laughs> so I was going to put him in there and I'm like, who's going to buy that. Right. You know, so you weigh it out. Um, but yeah, cause I wanted to do it. Ned Beatty to, would be uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's just the stuff I want to paint, you know, but uh, who knows? Who knows what's next? It's whatever I'm feeling at the time. I have a uh, planes, trains, actually a painting that I have up there uh, drawn out. It's been up there for a couple months that uh, it's going to be like a good 60 hour sit down. So I'm going to, I might do that this summer. We'll see, you know, so, but every one of them cool. is an adventure and, and I like a challenge. So I am booking commissions right now. So if you want to hit me up for some stuff, um, let me know. Send me your ideas. Send me photos. I'll send you back some idea on pricing, and we can we can go from there. Where Just can find people find Twitter. you? People can find me on the Insta Twitter book. I'm on all of that stuff. Uh, Facebook, I'm here. Uh, Instagram at Shad Paints. Twitter at Shad Art, and my website www.shadart.biz. 
for all your fine art needs. So yeah, all over the place. I just put that in the comments too, so people can get there and hopefully can get to your pretty much awesome. anywhere from there. So, and I definitely, if, yeah, someone wants a commission, I strongly encourage it. Support local, and if you're not local, support them anyways. Um, yeah, tons cool. Of, well, thank you very much, Ed. Well, yeah, you do have some prints you, and stuff too. Watchtower. Yeah. I, I uh, hey, we appreciate should, being on here. It was rad. It was awesome. We should Ross, mention one thing real quick, Chad. Stay tuned. I got your screening coming out. And uh, Matt, good to see you. Jason, thank you as always, man. You guys are awesome. Uh, way to way to support me, man, and uh, right back at you. And stay well, stay healthy. Well, I appreciate you know. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, thank absolutely. you. And thank you. Was there something you wanted to mention, Lyle, before I disconnect? I just him? wanted or... to give Shad the opportunity to tell local people that he's doing curbside delivery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, had, I, I actually had my stormtrooper helmet on when I brought a painting out to a guy the other day, which is which is pretty good. Oh, that's you know? amazing. Because I didn't have a mask, so I was like, all right, well, this will work, right? Yeah, so I put that <laughs> that's on. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I had some King Kong gloves on. And it was pretty cool, man, you know. It's, keeping it, they're keeping it healthy out here. That in, in, is in awesome. Sticks, right? Very so, cool. But, uh, All right, Chad. Well, thank yeah, you. Curbside pickup. We got it. All right. Well, you cool. guys stay All right. Uh, and stay tuned. All right. Thanks, yeah, Chad. Take care, brother. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks. All right, guys. Have a good one.